Hello everyone, welcome to Hashtag from my Cardboard channel. During a previous video I explained how the ignition coil works. This video is going to be a follow up. I'm going to explain how to test an ignition coil in case you have a defective one or a weak coil. You'll know how to identify it before it creates other problems or it just gives you very poor performance. So let's get this camera up close and get started. So now that we have this camera up close, let's go over a simple test that can be done. We'll start with the ohm meter. You can do a couple of different tests with an ohm meter to check the resistance to make sure that there are no shorts or open circuits within the coil itself. And for this example, we're going to use the average resistance on both the primary and secondary. But for your vehicle, you still need to find out what resistance your coil should have. And you can find out easily. You can either look it up online or you can call your local auto parts store and get that information from them. That way you know exactly what the resistance should be for your vehicle. But this illustration will give you a very clear understanding on how to do it and should be a very good starting point for you. So we'll start with the primary resistance. To test that, you disconnect your cables that go to the coil or the plug if it has a plug. That way nothing is interfering with this reading. And you connect your negative probe of your own meter to the negative and the positive to the positive. And the average resistance should be anywhere from 0 0.2 to 2 ohms. Now to check the secondary resistance, you connect the leads to the positive and the output wire and the reading should be anywhere from 6,000 to 15,000 ohms. And like I said, this is an average reading, you still need to find out what yours should have. So those are a couple tests that you can do with an ohm meter and that will enable you to know if there are shorts or open circuits within the coil itself. Now another very helpful and simple test that can be done you use a circuit tester which is also called a test light and what you do you connect the negative to the negative cable still disconnected it can be connected that way nothing interferes and you touch the positive with the probe so what you do next you turn the key on make sure that there's power this should light up then you leave the ignition key on right after that you can either use a remote starter to crank the engine over or you can have an assistant turn it over whichever method you want to use and while the engine is being turned over, the light on the test light should flash on and off. And when the test light flashes on and off, that is telling you that the circuit that sends the signal to the ignition coil is operating properly. And if the light doesn't flash, whether it stays on or it's just not on at all, you have a problem, pickup coil, crank sensor, ECM, depending on the system and the edge of your vehicle. But at that point, you already know that you don't have a problem with the coil and the problem is going to be somewhere else so you need to start troubleshooting that and like I said this is a super simple test but it can avoid so many headaches because a lot of the times it's easy to start going in the coil direction wires, cap, rotor, all kinds of stuff when the problem was you were not getting the signal to the coil to begin with now let's go in a different scenario Let's say you don't own an ohm meter, you don't want to go buy one. You do have a test light, and that's checking okay. But you still don't know if you have a weak coil or not. But you do have a spark tester. So you already use the test light, and it is getting the signal on and off. So what you do then, if you have an external coil, you disconnect it from the distributor cap, and then you connect the wire directly to the spark tester, which it almost looks like a test light, so we'll just use this just like it was, right? So the wire from the coil goes to the spark tester and this goes to the ground, obviously, right? If it's a spark tester, it's gonna be grounded. Then you crank it over and then you look at the color of the spark on the spark tester. A very strong coil should look blue and it should have at least 40,000, so you adjust it because they're adjustable. So you go all the way to 40 to 50,000. It should jump all the way across and it should be nice and blue. If it's yellow or if it doesn't want to jump all the way across, you have a weak coil and it needs to be replaced. So now that we know the simple test that can be done to identify either a bad coil or a weak coil, let's go over certain things that could happen when you have a weak or a bad coil. So within the coil, when there's a short that lowers the normal resistance in the primary windings, this will allow excessive current to flow through the coil. And having existing current that's flowing through the coil could damage the computer driver circuit. This can also reduce the coil output voltage. And obviously that is going to result on a weak spark. Just like when you were using your spark tester, it would show a yellow spark instead of blue. 
When a coil has a weak spark, the vehicle is going to be hard to start. It's going to have hesitation under acceleration because it's not burning all the mixture and you're probably going to have black smoke coming out of your exhaust pipe. In a short on the secondary windings, will also contribute to a weak spark and no different than the primary ones it could damage the ECM depending on how severe the problem is. So as you can tell it's very important to identify either a weak or a bad coil before it causes other problems that would be more expensive to repair. So there you go, now you know how to test your ignition coil using either an ohmmeter or a circuit tester or a spark tester and by knowing how to perform this test you can identify a coil that is getting weak before it creates other problems and you can maintain the optimum performance of your engine. Thanks for watching. See you next time.